Book 1, Chapter 6 of Providence From everything which is or happens in the world, it is easy to praise Providence. If a man possesses these two qualities, the faculty of seeing what belongs and happens to all persons and things, and a grateful disposition. If he does not possess these two qualities, one man will not see the use of things which are and which happen. Another will not be thankful for them, even if he does know them. If God had made colors, but had not made the faculty of seeing them, what would have been their use? None at all. On the other hand, if he had made the faculty of vision, but had not made objects such as to fall under the faculty, what in that case also would have been the use of it? Not at all. Well, suppose that he had made both, but had not made light. In that case also, they would have been of no use. Who is it then who, had, who has fitted this to that and that to this? And who is it that has fitted the knife to the case and the case to the knife? Is it no one? And indeed, from the very structure of things which have attained from their uh, completion, we are accustomed to show that the work is certainly the act of some artificer and that it has not been constructed without a purpose. Does then each of these things demonstrate the workman and do not visible things in the faculty of seeing and light demonstrate him? In the existence of male and female, and the desire of each for conjunction, and the power of using the parts which are constructed, do not even these declare the workmen? If they do not, let us consider the constitution of our understanding according to which, when we meet with sensible objects, we do not simply receive impressions from them, but we also select something from them, and subtract something, and add, compound by means of them these things or those, and in fact pass from some to other things which, in a manner, resemble them. Is not even this sufficient to move some men, and to induce them not to forget the workmen? If not so, let them explain to us what it is that makes each several thing, or how it is possible that things so wonderful and like the contrivances of art should exist by chance and from their own proper motion? What then are these things done in us only, many indeed in us only, of which the rational animal had peculiarly need? But you will find many common to us with irrational animals. Do they then understand what is done? By no means. For use is one thing, and understanding is another. God had need of irrational animals to make use of appearances, but of us to understand the use of appearances. It is therefore enough of them to eat and drink, and to sleep and to copulate, and to do all the other things which they severally do. But for us, to whom he has given us also the intellectual faculty, these things are not sufficient. For unless we act in a proper and orderly manner, and conformably to the the nature and constitution of each thing, we shall never attain our true end. For where the constitutions of living beings are different, there also the acts and the ends are different. And those animals, when those constitution, when whose constitution is adapted only to use, use alone is enough. But in an animal man, which has also the power of understanding the use, unless there be the due exercise of the understanding, he will never attain his proper end. Well then, God constitutes every animal, one to be eaten, another to serve for agriculture, another to supply cheese, and another for some like use. For which purposes, what need is there to understand appearances and to be able to distinguish them? But God has introduced man to be a spectator of God and of his works, and not only a spectator of them, but an interpreter. For this reason, it is shameful for man to begin and to end where irrational animals do, but rather he ought to begin where they begin and to end where nature ends in us. And nature ends in contemplation and understanding, and in a way of life conformable to nature. Take care then not to die without having been spectator of these things. But you take a journey to Olympia to see the work of Phidias, and all of you think it a misfortune to die without having seen such things. But when there is no need to take a journey, and where a man is, there he has the works of God before him, will you not desire to see and understand them? Will you not perceive either what you are, or what you were born for, or what this is for which you have received the faculty of sight? But you may say, there are so but some things disagreeable and troublesome in life. And are there none at Olympia? Or you're not scorched? Or you're not pressed by a crowd? Or you're not com comfortable means? Or you're not without comfortable means of basing? Or you're not wet when it rains? Have you not abundance of noise, clamor, and other disagreeable things? But I suppose that setting all these things off against the magnificence of the spectacle, you bear and endure. 
Well then, and have you not received faculties by which you will be able to bear all that happens? Have you not received greatness of soul? Have you not received manliness? Have you not received endurance? And why do I trouble myself about anything that can happen if I possess greatness of soul? What shall distract my mind or disturb me or appear painful? Shall I not use the power for the purposes which I received it? And shall I grieve and lament over what happens? Yes, but my nose runs. For what purpose then, slave, have you hands? Is it not that you may wipe your nose? Is it then consistent with reason that there should be running of noses in the world? Nay, how much better it is to wipe your nose than to find fault? What do you think Hercules would have been if there had not been such a lion and hydra and stag and boar and certain unjust and bestial men whom Hercules used to drive away and clear out? And what would he have been doing if there had been nothing of the kind? Is it not plain that he would have wrapped himself up and have slept? In the first place, then, he would have not have been a Hercules when he was dreaming away all his life in such luxury and ease. And even if he had been one, what would have been the use of him? And what and what the use of his arms and of the strength of the other parts of his body and his endurance and noble spirit if such circumstances and occasions had not roused and exercised him? Well, then, must a man provide for himself such means of exercise and to seek to introduce a lion from some place into his country and a boar and a hydra? This would be folly and madness. As But as they did not exist and were found, they were useful to showing what Hercules was and for exercising him. Come then, do you also have observed these things? Look to the faculties which you have, and when you have looked them, and when you have looked at them, say, Bring now, O Zeus, any, di any difficulty that I'll please. For I have means given to me by thee and powers for honoring myself through the things which happen. You do not so, but you sit still, trembling for fear that some things will happen and weeping and lamenting and groaning for what does happen and then you blame the gods for what is the consequence of such meanness of spirit but impiety and yet god has not only given us these faculties by which we shall be able to bear everything that happens without being depressed or broken by it but like a good king and a true father he has given us these faculties free from hindrance subject to no compulsion unimpeded and has put them entirely in our own power without even having reserved to himself any power of hindering or impeding you who have received these powers free and as your own use them not you do not even see what you have received and from whom some of you being blinded to the giver and not even acknowledging your benefactor and others through meanness of spirit betaking yourselves to fault finding and making charges against god yet i will show to you that you have powers and means for greatness of soul and manliness but what powers you have for finding fault and making accusations do you show me